Hey corn squash, it's that time of the year with like, what, three-ish weeks left in the 100 days of growing food. Food is plentiful. Case in point. That's a basil bush. What's new and noteworthy in here? Just look at all these beautiful flowers, beauty planted. Sunflowers, way over my head, especially that one. Probably eight feet tall. The chickens are starting to get some stuff from the garden. A lot of stuff in this garden has cycled. <laughs> oh my gosh, we gotta do a little bit of cleanup. Three foot tall lettuce right there. We've been cleaning up. It's grown, it's produced, it's done. What's cool is we throw it over into the chickens. Look at this. One bee, another bee. That's a spaghetti squash. And that's a volunteer. Our cucumbers. Ah, oh, look, this is pretty, look. They didn't quite make it over this trellis, but they made it about six feet. Persimmons, any, what's that, wow. That's why we have the chickens right next to the garden. They're not even interested, they got enough down there. A perfect zucchini, more acorn squash, lots of tomatoes. Acorn squash is amazing because it pretty much stay, you can just like store it on your shelf for like six months or more, room temperature, and it doesn't go bad. Absolutely amazing. What's up, buddy? I did all the chores before the sign got me. Okay, good. Welcome to a weekly farm update, by the way. And by the way, we are almost to 300,000 subscribers. 300,000 subscribers. How many vlogs yes. have we made? Say that again. How many vlogs have we made? Yesterday was 800 vlogs. 800, y'all. Let's celebrate 801 vlogs today. <laughs> How do you want to celebrate? Watch a movie, oh. <laughs> have popcorn, make okay. something. Okay. It is movie night, so we'll do that. We'll, we'll do that. For you guys, though, when we get to 300,000 subscribers, maybe you can help. If you're not subscribed, subscribed. Fun fact. Like 75% of you guys watching are not subscribed. So we get to 300,000 subscribers. We're gonna give away a bunch of stuff. My movie, Permaculture Chickens, on how to raise chickens from hatching to the plate. My movie, The Great American Farm Tour. Be inspired to be content and grow where you're planted. Oh, and we'll look around for any of the merchandise we have, the Just Plant stuff, any, like, do we have any gaff mugs left? I think we do. So yeah, let's get to 300,000. Let's celebrate that. We'll have a huge giveaway. No, try still it. Some, I don't see why that's not ready. Carpia. Go ahead. Try your blueberry. Yeah. I think we're getting what we're going to get out of these blueberries the first year. I think we were lucky to get a couple handfuls of blueberries. These the weeds, man. It's 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 been rainy lately. They're creeping up over the mulch. Wow, that's a lot. Good. Mm. So we're going to have to be on this, make sure we weed this probably one more time this season. Coming down, checking on the sweet potatoes. It's amazing how quick these weeds come in. But look, our sweet potatoes are doing fabulous. We're just gonna give them a little breath here at the edge. Weeds encroaching, but look, for the most part, they're good. Mulch is hanging on. The sheet mulch, or the mulch bombs are doing great. The paper plates. We're gonna leave the brothers growing. The squash, sweet potatoes, tomatoes. Look, it's not too bad down here. If you don't know what a sweet potato vine looks like, that's it. It's beautiful. Okay, this, not a sweet potato, looks like wild lettuce. Oh. Hey, y'all ready? You gonna carry him? You gonna carry him? Yeah, come on. You wanna get on Jonah? Yeah. Now you'll know what I go through. Yeah. Down here, our greenhouse. Comfrey's coming up. If there ever was a permaculture plant, it's Comfrey. Let's get inside the greenhouse. I'm, I'm happy to show you guys this. Well, not this part. Some animal got in there. I think the cat. But anyway, these plants are doing good. Only a little bit of bug bites. And these, remember that? I oversprayed Shackley H for the bugs. The turnips are bouncing back great. I'm loving it, these are turnips. And then down here, remember I took some pressure off these guys because they were getting bugs. I think that it was too hot for them, so I put the shade cloth off. And I think just taking away one stress, and that being the intense heat, 
has helped them because we got lots and lots of vegetables going into the fall and winter garden. Now take note, those are growing in the greenhouse. I'm gonna show you where they're gonna go. We have some things working the ground, preparing for those plants at the same time. Let's go to check on the guineas. And if you've been following us the last few days, you're gonna wanna see the sheep. We've got two left, we lost three. Parasite loads, three to five different worms. We're handling it, we're on it. Herbally, we're on it with management style, keeping them off the wet grass while we bring them back into health and then we're gonna get them back out on the grass full time. Right now we're just putting them out in the afternoon. Guineas are our tick control. Well, we're gonna move them today. Let's move them. Boy, yeah. they spill a lot of grain. I hate to move them with all that grain right there. No. Okay, let them run out of feed and then we'll move them. So don't feed them tomorrow okay. and we'll move them. Okay. And then we'll eat How are they doing though? They all in there? We got 10 guineas. The guineas are cooped up because you have to coop guineas for like, some people are saying six to eight weeks Nine to get them used to, five. that's their home. Guinea operation, pig garden. So excited about this pig garden. We've got beautiful rye coming back in. We planted that in between these mulch bombed. This is a, this would be an acorn squash. One of my favorite. Look how beautiful, look how bug free. This is where the pigs were. They did all this work for us. They didn't plant this, we did. But they went ahead of us and we went behind them and planted. And last week we chopped and dropped. Chopped and dropped this grass, put it around our cucumbers and our acorn squash. Jonah's garden, boy, we kind of let this go. His corn, maybe gonna make it. Look how tall that pigweed has got, this amaranth. That's crazy. For this to be more ideal, I should have chopped and dropped it a little earlier. It's kind of an experiment. I kind of wasn't really attached to this corn. Um, so let's see if it happens, even with this neglect. Every time I get, I sit. <laughs> it's rough. <laughs> it is. Let's do some chop and drop. We can try it with this $20 tool from... This one makes me nervous because you have to swing it. And I'm afraid I might actually hit a, uh, it's not bad. I might actually hit a plant. So I'm gonna use this rice knife or sickle. Some of you guys were wondering where I got this. This is actually from the tool merchants. Tool, the toolmerchants.com. He sent it to me to showcase, show on the blog. Looks like a pretty cool guy. He'll give you guys a discount if you just use the offer code abundant. So use offer code abundant. I'll leave this in the description. If there ever was a permaculture tool, it's a sickle because, watch, I have my plant over there. Don't really want to uproot anything. Hold your hand upside down so you don't cut your thumb off, and then you pull. Oh, you guys didn't see that, did you? Hold your hand upside down so you don't cut your thumb off, and then you pull. You don't chop, you don't swing. You just pull. And with this grass that you've cut, it becomes mulch. It's amazing how, spend a little bit of time, I don't know, three to five minutes, Chopping and dropping that versus this total ne neglect. Just a little bit of my effort will yield more. This is where we've been putting the sheep out when the grass dries. We're gonna need to move them on down pretty soon. They get in here and they munch on this stuff. They're eating more and more every day. We'll want to move their shelter forward though so they're not laying in their own poop. How are you big boys doing, huh? They're doing good. Starting to, starting to really do their jobs. Right here behind the chicken, this is, this is what it looks like before. Chickens are tailing it, it's almost ready. We're gonna plant that stuff that was in the greenhouse in here, and then it looks like this. We've planted our crops, there, see? We have pumpkins coming in. What, do, what else do we have in here? All this stuff is our pumpkins or squashes. What? There is a big pumpkin in here. I saw it yesterday. The only thing I think I'm gonna do different, this is kind of crazy and I don't wanna get bit by a snake, is I'm gonna do wider rows or either hoe them, put down rock pathway, put down stepping stones or mulch, wood chips, so that we can walk through here and easily find this stuff without worrying about a snake. 
But look at that. Pumpkin. Huge pumpkin. And there's spaghetti squash in here. The problem with that too, you know, giving myself a row in here, unless I planted the same thing, like all pumpkins, and they're all ready at the same time, I'm worried about coming through here and actually stepping on a vine and hurting something. Like stopping the growth of something that wasn't ready. Look. Over here in our south crop garden, pretty much done. Just gotta get in here and harvest some beets and some potatoes. That's smart oh look. There's some volunteers coming on. You okay. Ready? You what, you gonna harvest some of your corn? Yeah, that's right. Okay, go for it. Do you eat it raw or you like to cook it? I'll cook it. We've got our Icelandic operation. Problem here is we've let them free range. It's a good thing. They go back in, some of them. Do even half of them go back in that night, Jonah? Mm, no, the goose. I'm gonna show you where they go. The goose and a few. We gotta get on our chick shot mini me for them. Because <clears throat> this is what happens when you don't move chickens. They find a favorite spot. And they stay in that And this is where they are every night. <laughs> come on, dorts. I have to come out here. Get down. I have to come out here with a stick and poke them yeah. out. And then they'll go in, right? And then they fly, they fly out and they run straight to the yard. Oh my God. How are these guys doing? They're almost done. They're going to be done Thursday. Today's Friday. So a little less than a week. They get to where they eat uh, 75 birds. Well, there's 70 ish in there right now. They eat about 50 pounds a day by the end. And we're going to just keep it at that and let, and let them and encourage them to eat the grass. We ran into this last time. I feel like we could probably butcher it seven weeks. Boom! One gallon. One gallon strong, Violet. Thank you very much. We've been adding a little bit of selenium and a little bit of copper to her feed. Help her balance out her minerals. Uh, she's shedding her coat. And hopefully, hopefully, we'll get her to come in heat. Time to check on the sheep. We're gonna drench. Smalls is more bold. That's sweet. your corn? It's sweet corn. Whoa, let me see. That's perfect, dude. Good job. You planted that. The sheep have been out all afternoon and I'm gonna go get them. Jenna. Well, you got an honest review right there, Jonah. 